some people sometimes wonder if I've always wanted to be a scientist. So today I'd like to share with you a bit of my story. Um, when I was a kid, I asked a lot of questions. Makalita kong bata. Thankfully, my mom, who's somewhere in the back there, never tired of them. She wouldn't trust me or dismiss me like other parents would. Uh, even if she didn't know the answer, she would simply say, Anak, hindi ko alam. I don't know. But we can find out together. And so we look it up in our books. Wala pang internet noon. Can you imagine? <laughs> but the important thing is, I learned that it was okay to ask questions. In fact, it was good to ask them and to look for the answers. And I never stopped asking since. One afternoon, it was raining, so I asked, San galing ang ulan? Where did the rain come from? So the answer she gave is from the clouds. Tama. Uh, but of course, I asked, where do clouds come from? And so we looked it up, and I learned about the water cycle. Clouds themselves form from water that evaporated from the rivers and the ground itself after it rained. So water made its way from the ground up to the sky and back down again as rain. And the cycle would repeat itself again and again. So I learned that behind something that seemed unpredictable and random, like the rain, sometimes it rained, sometimes it didn't, thankfully today, hindi mulan, there's actually an underlying process. There's an order that's hidden from plain sight, but it's there all the same and it's happening all the time. And that gave me comfort then, as it does today. When I was a kid, I wanted to become an astronaut. <laughs> uh, I was fascinated with space, like most, many kids are. Um, but I was smart too. Soon I realized that was not a practical dream. Um, height limit pa lang, hindi na papasa. So I set my sights back down on Earth. At some point, I wanted to become a lawyer, uh, like our <laughs> friends here, and actually like our good family friend, Attorney Lontok. And then I wanted to become an architect, like my older cousin, who was studying to be one then, and is a successful one now. Eventually, I settled to wanting to go into business, just like my parents. It was only in high school at Philippine Science, when I started to even think that I can become a scientist. You see, growing up, we didn't know anyone who was a scientist, so it didn't even occur to me that I can be one. Um, in the books, scientists were an abstract concept, or they were people long dead in strange costumes, like that guy, not from here, not from now, and nothing like me. So it was only in high school when I started to read about scientists who I can relate to and who I admired, uh, Uncle Albert and Mr. Feynman, that I started to think I can follow the same path. And that became my dream, and that's what I did. Luckily, it turned out to be a natural fit. You see, as a scientist, it is my job to ask questions and to look for the answers. Only this time, the questions are not those for which you can find the answers to in a book or even in the internet. These are questions for which no one knows the answers to, at least not yet. It's our job as scientists to push the boundaries of knowledge, to discover something new, and to understand the world a bit better than we did before. One of the greatest pleasures of doing science is that moment when after months and months of hard work, you print out a result, a chart, that you know is the first time was done. So you're the first person to know that thing. And that's the pleasure of being a scientist. As an astrophysicist, we ask questions like, how did the galaxies form? How did the universe begin? How will it end? And these are big questions. But the reason we can even begin to answer these big questions is because there is an underlying order behind all physical phenomena. The rain, the earth, 
stars, and the whole cosmos follow the same physical rules. And these are, these are rules that we understand. The science that explains the clouds here on Earth is the same science that explains the giant clouds of Jupiter, and it's the same science that explains even the clouds in planets outside the solar system, like Kepler-7b, which we believe has clouds like Earth. The gravity that pins me to the stage and you to your seats is the same gravity that holds our galaxy together and that governs the evolution of the universe as a whole. And so this sense of order that I got when I was a kid is with me today. It's even stronger. It stretches over all space and time. But I don't confine myself to questions of astrophysics. For, in fact, the world is much, much bigger than the universe. As a Filipino, I ask questions like, where did the Philippine archipelago form? And how did it come to be populated? Who are our ancestors? And these are big questions, too. And our scientists at the Philippine Genome Center and National Science and Research Institute, led by Dr. Corazon de Ungria and Mr. Frederick Delphin, with current DNA analysis technology, they can already start piecing together some answers. When I was a kid, I asked, where did the rain come from? Today, our scientists at the OSD's Project NOAA and at the Manila Observatory ask questions like, when will it rain? Where will it rain? And how much? They ask, where will the rain go? And perhaps more importantly, to save lives and livelihoods from floods. Where should it go? Um, just recently, I don't know if you've heard, but just across Katipunan, they discovered a new species of water beetle, that one, right inside Ateneo campus. So a new species right inside Metro Manila. Um, and in fact, our country has one of the highest concentrations of endemic biodiversity in the world. And we can only begin to imagine how rich and how unique life is in our forests, in our mountains, our waters, waiting to be discovered and studied. And if we are wise, to be protected and preserved. So I hope I've given you a flavor of the wonderful work being done by scientists right here in our country. And there are many, many more stories that deserve to be told. And I hope that they will be, uh, they continue to be, more and more. See, I have a confession to make. When I was younger, I thought, naively, though perhaps understandably, that to be like the scientists who I read about and who I admired, I had to go study and work where they studied and worked, abroad. And that's what I did. But today, I'm happy to say, after eight years, long years abroad, I no longer think that's true. Today, I'm happy to say I've decided to come back and to do science here. Because even though there's still many challenges to doing science here, in many ways it's true that it's a wonderful time to be a scientist in the Philippines. And I'm excited by the fact that as more and more people realize this and join us geographically and virtually, together, we can form a future where science plays a greater role in our country's public life, a future in which engaging questions is encouraged by our culture, not dismissed. A future in which more and more young Filipinos can grow up thinking that they can be scientists. And I feel very lucky that I can be part of building this future. You may ask me, Reina, why bother? Why bother to ask this, these questions? What does it matter to me today? And to be honest, I find myself asking these questions too, sometimes. But in the end, I have to ask back. Why not? Why not ask? Why not ask like a child naturally asks questions? 
like I did when I was a kid, like you did too when you were a kid. The question is, when did you stop asking? And why did you stop asking? My appeal to you today is to remember that makulit na bata you once were. My appeal is that you don't shush the little kid inside you who is asking questions. And please, don't shush the real kid beside you for being makulit. My hope is that you find yourself asking questions again, like a kid, and with your kid, or young cousin, neighbor, or niece. My hope is that you discover the pleasure of learning something new every day. And my hope is that you never stop asking. And I hope the same for myself. For we do not ask questions because they matter. We do it because it matters that we ask questions. Thank you very much.